Uh, moving on, uh, on, on, the, on another example, uh, I'm, I'm calling in now uh, Natasha Frank. She's an American entrepreneur. Uh, she's dealing with uh, IoT on uh, re recycling, but um, I'm sure she will not present it this way. So I let her introduce herself, her activity, and her perspective. Good morning. Um, hi, I'm Natasha. I'm, can, is this okay? I'm founder and CEO of a company called Eon, and we work on IoT, which is Internet of Things for the purposes of circular economy and sustainability. And there's a tremendous opportunity here, as well as a huge imperative, because our generation is the first generation to learn of climate change and also have the ability to do anything about it. And the ability to harness the power of technology to enable this sustainable future is absolutely essential. So our company works specifically with a focus in the fashion, apparel, and retail industry. And that may seem, you know, why, why that focus? Fashion is actually one of the most, number two most polluting industry in the world, second only to oil. Um, so there is a massive, massive pollution here in this industry, and it also introduces a, the first model for introducing IoT, or the Internet of Things. And can I get a show of hands of just who in here knows what IoT is? Okay, we're doing pretty good. Um, so the Internet of Things is basically the permeation of the digital world into the physical world, right? So we think of the Internet as something that we search on our computers. Well, this asset, this product, this shirt will be searchable. This will have a digital identity. This will have a profile. And that leads to, you know, the biggest introduction of data into the physical world, which also introduces the biggest opportunity to use data to power a regenerative future. So if we get a little bit tangible with this, what are we actually attaching to a physical product to bring it online? Here's an example. This is what we've developed, um, as well as software that enables this. But this is one of the industry's first RFID tags in the form of a thread that can be embedded into the product, right? So that's actually what you attach to products to bring them into the digital world, right? 80% of retailers are moving toward item level RFID tagging. So now you have a huge opportunity to marry this kind of technology with sustainable future, right? So if this product has a digital identity, now you can access all the transparency, all the information about the utilization of that asset throughout the product life cycle, and you also have the first global system for recycling because you can scan the asset, recognize the material content, sort, separate accordingly. It also is a huge alignment or potential conflict with policy, right? Because now we have products that are identified and we have data merging into the physical world, and how do we even begin to start to regulate that, start to measure that, start to create solutions around that, when most, you know, IoT is very new and emerging technology. While new and emerging, IoT is actually about, by 2025, going to be 11% of the world economy, right? So this is not something that is a sort of side technology. This will reinvent about every single industry as the digital world moves into the physical. Um, so if we, if we actually, you know, compare this, I think an example that helps look at how data, you know, looking at the physical world here is right now when you send mail through the post office, right, the post office doesn't read your mail, right, but if they decided that the post office wanted to make more money by reading your mail, you would say, oh, no, no, right, that wouldn't be okay, yet that's what Google does every day when you're using these services because you're signing up for them for free. Right? And so basically you now have kind of the, this kind of concept that you wouldn't accept in the physical world moving into the digital world. Right? But then on the other hand, if you look at a, you know, an example like that with a different approach, when we look at technology in the physical world, you know, like the use of um, municipal energy systems and the public-private partnerships that go into designing urban energy utilization, there's great alignment there in terms of how the cities and the and the energy companies are working together to create um, urban infrastructure. So here I think we kind of have two different examples of the way that data ownership and collaboration can kind of reshape the future landscape of technology. Um, and how can we now, with IoT, harness the power of that technology for sustainability, for you know, policy improvements? And I think it's one of the most important things that policymakers, entrepreneurs, 
big technology companies get right because this technology is the most powerful enabling technology for a sustainable future. So if we don't look at those intersections of where we can use big data and this, this sort of cross-section with consumer privacy and government opportunity, then we won't be able to extract the value here. So I think this conference presents an incredible opportunity to start to look at those new public-private partnerships, how technology plays in that sphere, and how to kind of create solutions that actually support this more meaningful future. So thank you so very much, and um, I look forward to speaking with you all later. Thank you. So, thank you, Natasha. I would like to stress two points. So what Natasha showed you as a, an RFID tag in form of the threat is quite a technological achievement. So. In it, uh, and you will see more. Uh, that, that will accelerate uh, with uh, uh, the, the deployment of notably the 5G telecommunication standard that will allow and we master the problem of the energy on the IoT side, so uh, that will develop. But also for this conference, I think uh, Natasha highlighted a very important point is the traceability and, uh, and the transparency. There will, there will be no place to hide. You will, you will have it. You will know from the beginning where, where it is developed and then produced, manufactured, used, reused, and then uh, uh, recycled. And, and that will provide an enormous amount of data that will not be able to be processed by the normal uh, compliance uh, mechanism that we have today. And we will have to integrate these elements uh, a lot of the IoT data, by the way, will be useless, and to be very clear, uh, because if we, they are just here, but you can't do anything about it. But a very important fraction of it will be extremely useless and will help perform uh, not only the compliance part, but also understanding how efficiency and effectiveness, notably in the consumption, can be, can be improved. Uh, because we will de identify patterns that we cannot identify today by just observing what we see as human beings. So that was the point. So thank you very much for uh, your, your point, Natasha.